So we've embarked on a powerful series today titled On Purpose. Amen. Last session, I, I mean, we had, a, we had a, a prophetic break last Sunday, so I didn't really get to preach. But last session, we introduced some simple foundational truths, praise the Lord, that we need to better understand God's promises, our purpose, and how we fit into all of this as individuals. You know what I want to, I took a class in, in some years ago, I'm not going to tell how many years ago, which was called Demystifying Poetry. And it was a guy who loved poetry, you know what I mean? And he, when, when I would come into the class, he would just, oh, Vince, what, do you have any word for us today? Uh, it, it wasn't a prophetic word. It was really, I, I love to write poetry. But I'd like to demystify some things concerning Christianity. Because I don't think you understand, I don't think most people in America understand that we, that American Christianity is very different from Christianity around the world. Right? American Christianity, we're happy when we prosper. <laughs> I'm going to drop something deep on you. Around the world, other Christians are happy when they're persecuted. Yeah, yeah. A lot of us would quit God. For the same reason a whole lot of other folk worship God. They're worshiping him because they're able to suffer for the gospel's sake. Is that, a, is that amazing or what? Wow. We, you know, for, we, we, we've kind of pushed ourselves away from the whole suffering part of Christianity. But I'm here to tell you that suffering is inevitable. Right? So the subtext for today's sermon is tried on purpose. Before I get into it, let's pray. Praise the Lord. I, you know, this is wonderful. My wife prophetess Tahita Hinton usually sits here and right now she's in the booth that's a blessing for me because every time I look up I get to see my beautiful wife <laughs> that's a blessing I, I, I know she would prefer to sit here but it's a blessing for me <laughs> God is good let's pray father God we just thank you for your word we thank you for your grace we thank you for your goodness father Pour upon us a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the deep and intimate knowledge of you that we might be hearers of your word, but not just hearers, that, but that we might be doers of your word. Father, think through my mouth, my mind, and speak through my mouth that your word may go forth unhindered and unchecked in Jesus' name. Turn with me to Psalms 139, 13 and 16. 13 through 16. A lot of us, when we begin to go through troubles and, and problems, we start to question our relationship with God. We start to question if God is with us. We start to question if we're on our right path. But did you know that there are a lot of times in your life that you're tried on purpose? <laughs> Psalms 139, I'm reading from the Amplified Classic Edition, 139, 13 through 16. He says, for you did form me in my inward parts. For you did form my inward parts. You did knit me together in my mother's womb. I want somebody to receive that. God formed you. God formed your inward parts. He knitted you. Oh, my goodness. He put, one, he put one gene together. And then watched them multiply. And found pleasure in your growth. He said, I will confess and praise you for you are fearful and wonderful. And for the awful wonder of my birth. Oh, my goodness. He said, I'm going to praise you. Uh, 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 Brother Eddie, he said, I'm going to praise you because you made me. Oh, my. I, I, I need to, just let that sit for a minute tonight. God said, I'm going to, uh, uh, David said, I'm going to praise you because you made me. How many times do you walk in regret? Oh, remorse. How, how much self-hatred exists in the world? I'm not saying you're perfect. But I'm saying we need to stop for a minute and give God some glory. <laughs> you know, there's some folk who hate their mama and daddy, but they need to stop for a minute and say, uh, Mama, I thank you. 
Because if, if I didn't, if, if, if I wasn't here, I wouldn't be able to experience the things I, oh my goodness. Mm, mm, mm. He said, for the awful wonder, that, and when that says awful, that's not bad. That's awful. That's all. The awesome wonder of my birth. Wonderful. Oh. He said, wonderful are your works. He said, wonderful are you. You know, he was talking to Shanae. He was talking about himself. He was raising his hands before Lord, the Lord God and said, wonderful. I'm wonderful. Somebody put your hand over your heart right now and say, I'm wonderful. Not because of me, but because of him. Hallelujah. He said, and that my inner self knows right well. He said, my frame is not hidden from you. Uh, uh, uh. When I was being, I'm ready to run. I even got into the sermon. He said, when I was being formed in secret and intricately and curiously wrought, as if embroidered with various colors in the depths of the earth, a region of darkness and mystery, your eyes saw, your eyes saw my unformed substance when you were yet nothing that could be visible by the natural eye. God saw you. But not only did he see you, he knew you. Oh, my goodness. I'm talking to somebody. I'm a, when I get through this, I'm just going to have benediction. We're just going to pray. <laughs> he said, and look at this. He said, your eyes saw my unformed substance. And in your book, all the days of my life were written before they even took shape. Even as yet, there was none of them. There wasn't a day. Listen. Before, before you were apple in your daddy's eye, you were already full grown in the heart of God. Can I talk to somebody this morning? So as we began to discuss before, God thoughtfully, deliberately, and love, lovingly designed each one of us. Amen. He didn't make, listen. You made some mistakes. You made some poor choices. You made some bad decisions. But can I tell you something? God didn't make one mistake. <laughs> he didn't make any mistakes when he made you. He considers your contribution and purpose as extremely valuable and necessary. So for many, the problem is not that they have a hard time believing in the goodness of God. You talk to people, they believe in the goodness of God. They believe in his healing. They believe in the deliverance. They often simply have a hard time believing in themselves. The way, can I tell you something? Psalms 139, the whole book is wonderful. It's about us. And it's about how much God loves you and believes in you. So the problem is not that God doesn't love you. The problem is not that God doesn't believe in you. The problem is you don't believe in yourself as much as God believes in you. Oh, so 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 the, the problems you've had with with your educational background, with your family upbringing, with your personality and character peculiarities, believe it or not, all of them are very intentional. God placed obstacles and barriers and hurdles in your way, not for you to claim them and stay like that but so that you can grow and learn from them. Look at this, Zechariah, turn with me, Zechariah 13 and nine. Zechariah 13 and nine. If you can't find it right quick, write it down. Go back and read it. Zechariah, he says, and, uh, oh my goodness. Zechariah 13 and nine, it says it like this. It says, and I will bring the third part. Uh, uh, somebody raise your hand and say, I am the third part. So what does he mean by third part? Well, the first part was the Jew, right? The second part was the people who came to Christ first that we read about in the Bible. The third part is the, is, are the ones who aren't written about. That's you, all right? He said, I will bring the third part through the fire. 
and will refine them as silver is refined and will test them as gold is tested. Yeah. And you always asking God, why am I having so many problems? He said, because you're the third part. Hey, come on, I need to test you. I need to try you on purpose. Somebody tell me to calm down. He says, they, they will call on my name and I will hear and answer them. I will say, it is my people. And they will say, the Lord is my God. Did you hear me? You're being tried on purpose. But see, the difference, and I talked about this a little bit last too, the difference in God trying you and testing you. See, people test you in the street all day long. Circumstances test you all day long because they want to see if you got in you what you say you got. In, you know, in, in the pen, they tell you, they, they, they want to see if you be about what you talk about. But God is not testing you to see if you are because he knows you are because he created you. He's testing you to bring out what he put in you. He's burning off everything that's stuck to you. Every impure, oh, y'all don't hear me. Every attitude, every impurity, every dead weight, every person that doesn't belong in your space is being burnt off. But in order for that to happen, you got to go through something. Because people can endure a problem here and there. But many problems, you're going to find out who your friends are. Huh. You're going to find out who your family is. You're going to find out who really loves you. Because the ones who love you are going to encourage you. Through your mistakes. Through your bad choices. Through your poor decisions. Even the best Job experienced it. The people he hung with. After he went through so much began to judge him. He was being tested by his circumstances so that he could see who his friends were. Oh. His wife even said it. What you need to do is what you need to do. What you need to do is what you, you need to curse your God. You need to curse your God and die. See, there are some people who will go through some things with you. Oh, I'm going to let that sit in for a minute. There are some people who will go through some things with you. But you've got to find out who are the people who will go through everything. You need R&D department. Come on. You need a ride or die. You don't need research and development. <laughs> You need ride or die. <laughs> you hear what? Yeah, yeah. You, come on, somebody. All the people we got with us, some of them is research and development. They watching to see how well you do. Y'all say, I'm gonna knock this podium over. They research and development. They ride. They they sitting there to see how well you do. And as long as you're doing well, we good. I don't need a research and development team. I don't need anybody in my corner seeing how well I do, seeing how far I go. I need somebody when I'm on my knees. I want somebody on their knees with me. I don't need to be on my knees and you asking me what's wrong with me. But if I'm on my knees, I'm going through something. I'm being tried. On purpose. Oh, my God. See, this is, this is the time. Brother Brandon, I wish I had one of them cameras. Because I feel like running. I feel like running right now. See, a lot of us are going through some horrific things. Some painful things. And we're wondering, is God there? Does he see? Could he possibly understand? And he said, yes. Precious. Oh, my goodness. He said, you are precious to me. You're like silver. You're like gold. But I've got to burn off the impurities. 
Huh? And so look at this. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Uh, can someone give me some, some napkins? There's some right over there. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I didn't preach myself happy. All right, let's all raise our right hand. May the Lord watch. <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just playing. <laughs> we, 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 we not having a bit of decent. We not having a bit of decent. <laughs> I just just got myself happy. I feel a whole lot better right now. Five and 17. He says, therefore, if any person is engrafted in Christ the Messiah, he is a new creation, a new creature altogether. See, some of you are brand new, right? And hanging in old places. <laughs> Some of you all are brand new and doing old things. You need to understand something that you are all together new. Stop thinking that you can be new and do old. <laughs> he said, listen. Uh, he is a new creation, a new creature altogether. The old, previous, moral, and spiritual condition has passed away. See, we think this is an event. This is not an event. This is a process. Zechariah said it. If you, a new creature, I'm going to have to burn off some old things. Oh, my goodness. Because I need to get you to why I created you. I need to get you to your purpose. If I got to burn off some things so that you can see why I created you, you understand that I'm trying you on purpose. Mm. Mm. He says, behold the fresh. Behold the fresh. <laughs> Woo! I had to say right there. Behold the fresh, the fresh promotion. Oh, you don't hear me. You don't hear me. You don't hear me. The fresh home, the fresh car, the fresh relationship. You, you have had, listen, in order for the fresh to come, the old has to go. Yeah, behold the fresh and new has come. So God allows these things. That are the things that are happening in your life right now, God allows these things in our lives so that he can take us through a refining process. A process that burns off the old nature. Came, come on. Of course, all of y'all, y'all, y'all came to Christ and flipped right then, didn't you? You looked at your hands and your hands looked new. You looked at your feet and your feet did. God, you knew that's a lie. <laughs> That's what you thought. <laughs> Everybody else was like, she ain't changed at all. <laughs> but I need you to understand something. There's some attitudes that you have that are keeping you in trouble. There's some things that you say that continue to perpetuate the circumstance. Oh. He's trying, the reason why you keep getting in those situations that keep causing that old nature to rise is because he's trying to bring that nature to the top so he can burn it off. Why, 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 why do I keep getting into situations like this? Why do circumstances keep happening like this around me? Because he wants to rise that problem that you have with your mouth. That problem that you have with your attitude. That problem that you have with impatience. That problem that you have with bitterness. That po problem that you have with resentment. He's trying to get that from the bottom to the top. Because it's sticking. And you can't shine like pure, pure gold with that stuck to you like that. <laughs> so it's time for us to allow the old to burn off. Listen, the next time something happens to you, like the last time, Promise yourself that you won't respond the same way. Promise yourself that if you can't say the right thing, don't say nothing. I'm giving you some help right here. Because if you keep responding 
the same way to the same thing, the same thing going to keep happening. You know what they say about people who do the same thing over and over again and get the same result. They call people like that crazy. Except you're not crazy. Praise the Lord. You just keep doing the same thing in the same thing. <laughs> get, get, the same, get the same response. But you're not crazy. They just need to quit messing with you. They should know your limit by now. They should understand you by now. Only problem is the they you think they are is really God. Trying you on purpose. Ah! So please, please understand this process doesn't diminish God's love for you, nor does any of this decrease his desire for you to accomplish your purpose. You're going to have to see, see, you're not going to be pulled out of what you are in and put on a path to your purpose. You're going to go through what you're going through to get your purpose. <laughs> God desires for you to accomplish your purpose. Now, believe it or not, the stuff that you're experiencing, the patterns that you're going through, the cycles are part of God's plan for you to discover your purpose. Move through it. Mm. See, the problem is a lot of us just stay where we are. Well, that's just how I am. That's the way God made me. Yeah, that, and that's why you keep going through it. Because he made you to go through it. But you're deciding to stay in it. So, uh, Isaiah 64 and 8. See, God wants every part of your life. Mm. God wants every part of your life to have purpose not just for you to walk in your purpose when you do this thing. He wants your waking up to have purpose. Ah, oh, he wants your going to bed to have purpose. He wants your uh, interactions to have purpose. He wants your casual conversations to have, you don't hear me. He wants your eating, your sleeping, your, your everyday existence to have purpose. Not just when you're doing what you know you do, on purpose to have purpose. See, we think we think that we're operating in the will of God when we do, you know, I'm a prayer warrior. I operate in the will of God when I pray. Oh, no, that is not just your purpose. How you talk to somebody five minutes before you started pray praying is part of your purpose, too. You're going you to be, you go, you go be honking your horn, cursing people out in the car, and think that you're not in your purpose. Oh my, help me Jesus. Are you praying for me, Danielle? You see me up here sweating like God wants every part of your existence, every waking moment to have purpose. Oh my goodness. Did you turn to Isaiah 64? I almost forgot. See, because we think that there are times when we don't have to worry about purpose. There are times when we're dealing with relationships with other people. Right, 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 right. People say things to us and we say things under our breath. And you didn't say it out loud, but you spoke it. Mm -hmm. we, we think all of that, oh, see, but I didn't hurt nobody. But did you say it? We lived in a word world. Let me tell you something about people who say things. <laughs> because people think that as long as they don't say it, they'll be all right. But let me tell you something, you better break, you better take that thought captive. Because if you think it long enough, keep thinking it, keep thinking it, mm -hmm. keep thinking it. Keep thinking she trifling, keep thinking it, keep thinking it. And then you're going to say it, even if it's under your breath. And if you keep thinking it, you might say it to her, but before you say it to her, guess what? You're going to say it to somebody else. You know she surely is trifling. See, we think we're good as long as we don't say it to the person who's trifling. The problem is you thinking it. The problem is not that she's trifling. The problem is you thinking it. Oh. Woo. 
So when I begin to think negative things, I'm stepping outside of my purpose. Right? Now I've got to work to get back into purpose. You see, you, you, uh, gossip, tailbearing, all of these things carry you. Anything that involves the mind connected to the tongue. Because the Bible tells us that the tongue is a rudder. A rudder carries. So any, anything that's in the mind connected to the tongue is primed to carry you somewhere. And if it's not the word of God, it's going to carry you away from your purpose. Right, 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 right. So you might say, well, you know, Pastor, I need somebody to talk to sometime because, you know, I need to, to vent. Vent ain't never help, it, help nobody. And can I just tell you that venting has never helped anyone. You need friends that will be honest with you and help you process what you're feeling. See, we like to talk to people who just listen. We don't want to talk to nobody who's going to tell you what you need to do. Well, you know what you need to do is, oh, see, I'm not calling you no more. I ain't trying to hear what I need to do. I, that means you didn't hear me when I told you what she did. Yeah. But the word of God says, James 5, 16, right? Confess your faults. One to another. And pray. That you may be, listen, when you're talking about who did what to who, you ain't thinking about praying. Wow. And if you ain't thinking about praying, you are drifting away from your purpose. Hallelujah. So what am I saying? God uses even the difficult seasons and times of our lives to show us our purpose. Hallelujah. God is turning around every, every negative, adverse situation in your life right now. God is developing that to show you your purpose. Can you, can you put in your mind right now somebody you really dislike? It didn't take you long at all, huh, Shanae? Did you know that that is your purpose partner? That's the person that God picked to point you to your purpose. And as long as you continue to be irritated by that person, you will never reach your purpose. As long as you let him annoy you, as long as you allow her to irritate you, as long as you stay in your feelings, you'll never be in the spirit. Come on, somebody, I'm preaching. I'm preaching up in here. I'm preaching up in here. But you, you want to stay hating. Haters ain't never prospered. Haters ain't never won. I need to change my attitude because by definition, as a hater, I am a loser. Every time you irritate me, I lose. Every time you frustrate me, I lose. Every time you annoy me, I lost. You didn't lose, you win, I lose. And every time I allow it, I'm drifting further away from my purpose. I need you to understand somebody, help me. I need you to understand something. You being tried on purpose. You being tried on purpose. He ain't the one. She not it. If you're gonna be mad at somebody, be mad at God. Because God is saying, I need you to move out of this. I need you to raise above this. In, in Revelation, he said, what he said in Revelation, I've opened the door for you. Come up higher so I can show you all the stuff I have. See, and, and, and I heard this, it's so wonderful. This, this, this analogy of a battle, a ma analogy of anger. I may have said it before, I'm not sure. But you know what a snake's favorite meal is? A snake's favorite meal is an eagle egg. Oh boy. It's an eagle egg. So while the eagle is soaring, snakes are slithering 
to get what the snake produces. I need you to, see, I need you to hear me. So while you're trying to do your job, your snake is trying to get what you produce. <laughs> Did you hear me? Did you hear me? While you're going about your business, while you being the eagle that you are, the snake's business is to get what you make, to capture what you produce. Now, now, now the eagle could come down and charge the snake. But if that is the case, if the eagle engages the snake on the ground, the chances of that eagle losing the battle are increased because the ground is the snake's area. See, we always want to go down where the snakes are. But the ground is the snake's camp. You get nasty with the snake, that's just what the snake wants. You get angry with the snake, that's just what the snake wants. So what does the eagle do? do? The eagle doesn't, because you know the eagle has a cough to scare the snake, he has a call. The eagle quietly comes up behind the snake, grabs the snake, and carries him up. Takes him all the way up to an atmosphere where the snake can't breathe. He paralyzes the snake in the air. Wait till the snake is lifeless in the air. Then he drops him. He makes sure there's no life left in the snake. Did you hear me? He kills the snake in the air. Then makes sure he did by dropping him. But every time he would seek to fight the snake on the ground, he only increased his chances of losing. I'm here to tell you, long as, long as, you, long as you're living in regret, you lost. As long as you're walking in unforgiveness, you lost. You hear what I, I'm talking to somebody. As long as you're bitter about what somebody did to you and they did do it to you to no, for no good reason. Listen, can I tell you something? There, in a lot of cases, you are the victim. Let's get that out of the way. It's not a figment of your imagination. The person that you think is a snake yeah. is a snake. <laughs> you thought right. But fighting the snake in the ground does not make you a winner. Yeah. Fighting a snake in a snake's camp does not make you Victoria. I need you to understand something. Let's get some things out of the way. You're being tried. You are a victim. And just because you fight back they way does not make you victorious. Um, I've got to say, I got it. This is a relationship between me and God, which means even when somebody over there is fighting me, I see God. Lord, what should I say? What should I do? How should I respond? Because even though they're coming at me seven ways. Mm. Father, I'm looking to you for the response because I want, to, I want them to flee just as fast as they come. I cannot fight them on their terms. I've got to understand, God, that you are the one that is allowing this in my life. And if you're allowing this in my life, there must be something in me that you're trying to get out. Oh. So even now, God is turning around some things in your life. Even now, as we're talking, I see light bulbs going on. There's some things turning around in your life right now. And let me tell you something, they're turning around for your good. If you close your mouth, don't feel like you've just been punked. <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's just me and Shanae up in here, too. <laughs> Uh, you know, that's the problem. This is the reason why we often fight back is because the enemy is telling us if you don't fight back, they just punk you. But your battle is not with your opponent. Your battle is with the Lord and he shall rise you up. The word of God says when he sets up in your camp, then all of your enemies are his enemies. And, and he says, let God arise. See, as long as your enemies are your enemies, meaning you're fighting the battle, then God cannot arise. Then it's, your, it's, it's not his battle. 
it's yours. You got to let God rise. He says, let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. They may come at you one way, but they shall flee seven ways. So let me tell you something. And we've talked about this before. Silence is first. Let your yes be yes. Your no be no. Don't say more than that. And if you can't say more than yes or no, with a good attitude. Yeah, yeah there you go. Yeah, somebody, I just heard somebody sigh like, oh. Shoot. You did good at If you can't say yes with a good attitude, just say. <laughs> and every time the enemy tries to come to you and call you a punk, say, My God is not a punk. And this is his battle. Huh? He's dancing right now. I worship him. Hallelujah. And watch him begin to turn things around for you. So God, now let me under tell you something. God is not the author of your hardship. He's not the author. He's not bringing this pain. But when we hand, when it comes, it's for us to hand it over to him. And let me tell you something. Put that person in your mind right now that you don't like. Well, not that you don't like them. It's not that you don't like them. You have an issue with them. And, to, and for a lot of you, they just don't like you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Shanae is tickling me over here. <laughs> can, I just, can I just be honest with you? They don't like you. They don't like what you represent. Did you hear me, Sister Sherry? They do not like you. And that's okay. I'm going to be quiet in the process. Because as long as I'm silent till I learn how to be better, God is going to be giving me beauty for my ashes. Listen, I might be burning up on the inside. I might be hot on the inside. I might, listen, I might, ooh, I could, I could tear down a city. I got fire in my heart, but I'm going to be silent and watch God give me beauty for all the ashes. Oh, somebody, come on. So the very thing, now I'd like to turn this inward because the very thing that you may despise even about yourself, you know, how you grew up, how your mama was, how your daddy was or wasn't. You know, cause, you know I, I grew up in, in anger because my father wasn't there. Right, so, you know, I tried in my flesh to make him see me, and he never did. And that's okay today. That's all right. Because God used that for my purpose. My life growing up, whatever else, whatever else, whatever you've had to go through up to now, can I just let you know that that is part of your purpose? It, is, it was created to help, you, to help make you into the person you are today. Now, why am I saying that? Because I want you to have the confidence. I want you to build the self-love. Because a lot of times we don't let go of the negative parts of us because of what the enemy tells us we are. You ain't never been nothing but a liar. You ain't never been nothing but a You, you smile sometimes, but you ain't never been nothing but angry. And so we hold on to things because of how we view ourselves. But I need you to, I need to hear you that God is not a condemning God, even when you're wrong. God is a convicting God and God's conviction does not make you feel less than. So if you're ever in a place or position where you feel less than, that is not God. If you're ever in a place where you feel condemned, where you feel like you'll never make it, you'll never be what you thought you wanted to be. You, you've accomplished all this and you still, that is not God. That is the enemy who is enticing your flesh. Let that go. Because God wants to come in. Now he's going to tell you you're wrong where you're wrong, but you're not going to feel bad when he's done. You're not going to feel less than, you're going to feel greater than. You're going to feel like you can accomplish whatever God said you can accomplish. 
all of your negative experiences, circumstances, personality traits, and relationships has forged you into the person that you are now. Even some things you might want to change. God is using that same thing to show you your purpose and his plan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So once we come to know Christ, once we're redeemed, there is a continual transformation process. It's a process of everything transforms. And it, it, it starts with the mind. But if he can change your mind, he can change your life. And a lot of us look for just the opposite. We look for a change in life to change our mind. You know, God, if God bless me, I see different. I think different. If, if God bless me, then I know he's a faithful God. No, it doesn't work like that. If, if, if God gives me this promise, then I know he got my back. It, Lisa, Lisa said that before. I need you to understand something. That's not the way God works. I have to declare he's a way maker first. I have to declare he's a promise keeper first. I have to declare he's faithful first. And in I, if I declare it long enough, then I transform my mind. And as I transform my mind, my life changes. And, and God sees the words out of your mouth and the intentions of your heart. And what does he do? He becomes not just a promise keeper. Oh, somebody help me. Somebody help me. He doesn't become just a way maker. He don't just become faithful. He becomes your way maker. Oh my. He becomes your promise keeper. Oh my. He becomes your faithful God. See, but we've got to do something to get to that place of covenant with him. I can't stay stank and nasty and he stay a good God. The word of God says that he will not strive with me in all ways. He is going to take time with you. He's going to be patient with you. But if you refuse, see, oh, I'm going. I'm see. see, God gave you dominion. Dominion has several levels. The first level of dominion is called dominion's dominance. The first level of dominion is free. Free dumb. That means dominion to do whatever I want to do. He gave that to me upon creation. The only problem we have is that if we continue to operate in freedom as, a, as opposed to surrendering that to him, he can't reach us. So you may want to have God bless you, but you keep doing what you want to. And God is saying, you've got to give me that first level. <laughs> you, you, you got, you got, I gave you dominion so that you could give it back to me. You've got to give me that. See, see, if you don't give me that first level, I can't give you any other level of dominion because you hung up in your freedom. Well, Lord, I like doing what I want to do whenever I want to do. He said, I understand. I gave that to you. I understand that. But you're going to have to sacrifice that if you want more. You have, and the first thing you learn when you have kids is you sacrifice your freedom. If you want God, you do the same thing. Sacrifice your freedom. When you do that, by transforming your mind, you transform your words. Your words transform your world. You come into close covenant relationship with God and you begin to see him as your God not just God. Oh my goodness. And so a lot of us are in a very merciful place where God is blessing us and blessing us and blessing us. He's so good to us, but he's so good to you right now. You're in the euphoric uh, stage of a relationship. He's doing that right now to get you to see who he is so that you can come out of where you are. He is not going to continue to bless you where you are. He's blessing you right now where you are. But the grace that you have, the favor you have, have has an expiration date. That favor is going to end 
Why? Not because God wants it to end, but because you won't come out. Amen. The favor God has for you is at another level. And you saying, go, God, can't you just keep blessing me right here? And God is saying, no, I can't keep blessing you right here. I'm blessing you right here so that you will have the strength to climb. So that you can go higher. Now, if you go higher, if you don't go higher, the blessings will all for you will always be there. But they're no longer going to be here. I hope that helps somebody. So this is why you need to understand it's important for you. Uh, Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, be not conformed to this world. That's 12 and 2. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that good. I am way off base here. That good. There's three, three levels. Then people never saw this, but this is three levels. That good, acceptable, <laughs> and perfect will of God, right? And so this is three levels of God's will that we actually move, that we're actually supposed to move through, right? We move from good. Now, good is when God is just blessing you. You ain't living right. You ain't doing nothing right. But God is blessing you. He's, he's blessing you to get you to a place where you can see yourself. That's the acceptable level. Where you grow to a place where you begin to see what God has permitted you to do. You become very grateful at that point. You become very thankful. God, I was dead wrong and you blessed me. I was unfaithful and you blessed me. So, so. You, you, you step from the good will to the permissive will. You see everything that God permitted. Oh, my goodness. Do you see? Do you see that? Now, if you look right, his permissive will will push you right into his perfect will. Because you'll see how true his favor was, how faithful he really was. You'll see how he moved things around for you. And it was your fault. You, you know, the person you couldn't stand, but really you was the problem. Uh -oh. You're like, God, I could have been fired. God says, yeah, you could have been fired, but I permitted it. Oh, y'all don't hear me. When you begin to see who you were and what God permitted in your life anyway, that moves you into his perfect will. That's the whole, th that's why you're being tried right now. So that you can see who you were. You can see how God's permissive will covered you. You can see how his, his grace and his favor was still intact. Not only intact, but on fire in your life. It's not so you can stay where you are. It's so that you can go to the next level. Hallelujah. Amen. So we come to know Christ. We're redeemed. Then we're going through a continual transformation process. The good, acceptable, perfect will of God. Hallelujah. That transformation process continues to our death. You never reach a level where you're all right. And if you ever reach a level where you think you're all right, you're way off base. <laughs> you ain't all right. So we're continually being made into the likeness and the image of our maker. That means we're continually becoming like Christ. We can be encouraged today that God created each of us with a purpose, for a purpose, and on purpose. And when we come to Christ, that purpose gets a new life. And everything begins to make real sense. Hallelujah. But I need you to understand something. Don't sleep on who you are. Your contribution in this life is just that, yours. It's like a puzzle. If you don't live out your purpose, a puzzle is missing. A piece of the puzzle is missing. Your purpose, your perspective, your experience, your uniqueness, it's all a part of God's plan. Hallelujah. We can embrace the fact that God is crazy about you. Oh. Even this, 
even with everything that's happened, even the stuff that you've done that nobody knows you did. Because you know you got some stuff in your life that you successfully kept secret. Hallelujah. (laughs) And nobody may not never find out. But God knows. And he's, it's not that he's still crazy about you. He's crazy about you. Mm. Mm -mm. Not only is he crazy about you, but he believes in you. He believes in you right now. He believes in what you can become. (laughs) He has a specific plan designed that only you are equipped for fulfill. Oh, my goodness. We're all here. Created on purpose. Created for a purpose. And we're tested and tried on purpose. All we do, all we have to do now, this is just surrender to the process. Say, Father, I surrender. I surrender to the process. Hallelujah. Why do we have to surrender to the process? Because the fulfillment of your dreams is a testimony to God's faithfulness. The world will see how faithful God is when they see you change. Dreams have got to, I need you to understand something. Your dreams, if they're real dreams, will exceed your abilities. Dreams that you can do are not dreams. Dreams are only dreams when they're beyond me. Come on now. See, a lot of us think God is saying something. God gave me a vision. But if he didn't, if if you got something that you can accomplish on your own, it wasn't God. Because God wants to show the world how faithful he is, not how great you are. Mm. Dreams must exceed your abilities. They must cause us to rely on his presence and his power. It's time we learned. Should I say this? It's time we learn truly how to dream. Because a lot of us have been imagining what we could do. What I could do if I had more people. What I could do if I had more money. You, 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 you ain't never thought about what you could do outside of you. That's a dream. Right? Everything else is a distraction. That's why some of us right up in here be thinking about the lottery. Because you look at what you, you think about what you can do with more money. <laughs> that ain't a dream. That's a distraction. What you could do with a wife, what you could do with a husband, what you could do with an education. Those aren't dreams. Those are distractions. God wants to do everything to, through you right now. But you're going to have to come up out of where you are. Hmm. It's time for us to learn how to dream. Because when we truly learn how to dream, then and only then can we dream bigger. The dreams you have are not big dreams. They're big distractions. Prophetess and I, we thank God for all the souls that have come to Christ and received salvation through the ministry of KBMI. Would you at home, is is, is there someone there that would like to receive Jesus today? All you have to do is repeat this simple prayer with me. Just repeat these words after me and let God change your life. But I had to say this because I want you to understand in America, Christian, Christians believe when they're operating on, in their purpose, when they're doing what's right, they shouldn't have any problems. And that's why we have so many problems because that gospel is not true. What is true is no matter what the problems I have, if I'm operating in my purpose, the problem doesn't matter. That's the gospel. Not that there will not be problems, but they won't matter. Why? Because I'm satisfied. I'm content with doing what God told me to do. Listen, come, let us say what she want to say. Let him do what he want to do. He just living. 
I'm operating in my purpose. <laughs> he can't stop me. He can't block me. He can't hinder me. What, what he's doing is causing what I'm doing to take a little longer. But guess what? I'm on God's side. And because I'm on God's side, I'm going to get there. Trouble, I'm going to get there. Problem, I'm going to get there. Nasty cashier, funky manager, I'm going to get there. Dangerous neighborhood, I'm going to get there. Listen, you can't stop me when I operate in my purpose. So what is the key here? We've got to learn to operate in our purpose. Stop just doing what you do because you do it. Okay. Ask God, is this my purpose? Father, show me my purpose. I need to operate in my purpose and understand that trouble happens to everybody. Especially those who operate in their purpose. I had to say that because I need you to understand God has been really dealing with me with this American Christianity. This whole word of faith movement. It negates the sovereignty of God. Some days you're going to do well, and some days you're not. Some days people are going to favor you, and some days you're going to see those who hate you. There's always going to be people who hate you. Oh, my God. And just because you operating in your purpose don't mean you're not going to have people who downright hate you, who will not speak to you, and will try to use you and throw you under the bus every chance. Just because you operating in your purpose doesn't mean your way is going to be made smooth. Your way going to be made. But sometimes it ain't going to be smooth. Oh, man. Yeah. See, we, I said this on Tuesday. We've confused God. When he's a way maker, we say he's a way maker. He makes way. Which means he spreads out where you can go where you need to go. The, the path that you're going may be bumpy, but he made a way. Hallelujah. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? See, a lot of us think this is going to be a carpeted way. Mm -mm. God said, did, 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 I, did I make way? Can you get to where you're going from here? Then stop worrying about it if you can do it in your heels. You might have to do it in your hikers. But I made a way. Oh, my God. So I just had to say that because so often, even churches today, it's a, a, a tickling ear kind of message where people, you know, I'm trying to keep members. I'm trying to keep the tithe flowing in. So, so I, I want to preach a word that makes you feel better. And I do want you to feel better. But you feel so much better in reality than you would with rose-colored glasses. Saints of God, ask God for your purpose. Understand that there's trouble. I, I, I want to build us, I want to build in us character. So next Sunday, we're going to talk about the troubles. So, some, so I'm talking about the trouble you go through. This is internal trouble. This is trouble you have perceiving others and, and how you deal with situations. But there, there's trouble out there. There are snakes out there. And next Sunday, I really want to deal with external trouble. Yeah. And how you should respond to external trouble. Because you're not going to have perfect people just because you're walking in your purpose. You're going to have people who are users. And all of that. You're going to have all that. So we're going to talk about that next Sunday. Praise God. So right now, just repeat this simple prayer with me. Those of you who would like to receive Jesus, who would like to receive the promise keeper, the way maker. Repeat this prayer with me. Just close your eyes. Repeat after me. Dear God, I know that I'm a sinner. I turn from my sins and ask for your forgiveness. Lord Jesus, I know you died and rose again that I might be free from the power of sin. Please, Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Take full control of my life today. Help me to walk in your footsteps every day by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my life. Thank you, God, for answering my prayer. 
in Jesus' name. Now, if you prayed that prayer, you may not feel any different, but I'm here to tell you that you have made all the difference in the world. The way maker is making way. The promise keeper has not closed down shop. He's still there. You have taken the first steps and God is ready to welcome you. He's invading your heart right now with peace. In Jesus' name. You know, KBMI, we do what we do because we care. But we couldn't care if God didn't first shed his love abroad in our hearts. It's because he loves us. Because we know the love he has for us. We love you. But that's not even the most important part of this equation. The most valuable part about all of this is God loves you. He wants to make you a man and a woman of his purpose and his plan. We thank you so much today. And as, as my brother here, Cecil, would say, you are now dismissed. Have a great rest of your Sunday afternoon. Amen. Amen. You know, I'm always touching my glasses. <sighs> Praise the Lord.